So the kidney is basically a giant filtration organ. It does a lot of other things besides filtration, but you can kind of think of it as a, uh, a, a giant filter. It's composed of these components called glomerulus and tubules. And these uh, glomeruli tubules uh, filter and then absorb and secrete substances uh, to help with uh, sustaining life. Uh, each individual filtering unit is called a nephron and each kidney has about a million nephrons. And you can see blood flows into the kidney through the artery and then blood comes out. And as blood flows through the kidney, uh, it uh, is filtered in the glomerulus and then it goes down to, to the tubules uh, whatever is filtered uh, at that point and uh, absorption and secretion takes place to ultimately produce urine. How is, kidney di how is kidney disease diagnosed? A blood test is done to measure your creatinine level. The creatinine level is then used in a mathematical equation to calculate your EGFR. And the EGFR determines your level of kidney function or kidney dysfunction. The EGFR stands for the estimated glomerular filtration rate. And that number generally falls into one of five categories. And it could be greater than 90, it could be 60 to 90, it could be 30 to 60, or it could be 15 to 30, or finally between zero and 15. The higher the number for your GFR, the better. Uh, and then the lower the number, uh, the worse it is. Uh, for those that are in stage five, uh, they could uh, be on dialysis or they may not be on dialysis. And this GFR roughly correlates to percent kidney function. So doctors may use it to say you have a 60% uh, kidney function or 75% kidney function. And what they're using to get that number is, is likely this eGFR number. Chronic kidney disease is unfortunately common. About 15% of U.S. adults are estimated to have chronic kidney disease. That translates to about 30 million people. For those who have diabetes or high blood pressure, uh, this prevalence does increase to one in three adults with diabetes and one in five adults with high blood pressure. Um, <clears throat> and this is kind of where uh, plant-based diets come in. So plant-based diets can be helpful in treating uh, both diabetes, hypertension, and also kidney disease, which is the subject of this talk. Before we get into that, I wanted to go over a little bit of plant-based diet basics. So what is a plant-based diet? So there is no exact definition. And it doesn't mean you have to be vegan or even vegetarian. Your diet is just mostly plants. And another way to say it is that you are eating less meat and dairy than the standard American diet. And there's a variety of terms that have been used to uh, to uh, uh, describe a plant-based diet. Some of these terms include plant dominant, plant strong, plant supportive, plant leaning, plant forward, plant powered. And these are all these are all terms that mean that plants are the focus of the plate. So, what is a plant-based diet? Uh, examples of a plant-based diet include a Mediterranean diet, a vegetarian diet, and of course, there are several subtypes to a vegetarian diet. It could also include a flexitarian diet, a pescatarian diet, a reducitarian diet, a vegan diet, a DASH diet, and then also a whole food plant-based diet. Plant-based plant -based diets can still be unhealthy. Uh, so an unhealthy plant-based diet could take the form of uh, French fries or fried potatoes and a burger. A healthy plant-based diet emphasizes the consumption of healthy, unprocessed uh, plant foods like fruits and vegetables. And there's uh, many things you can eat on a plant-based diet. Um, people often think of these diets as being restrictive, but many of the things that you can eat include fruits, vegetables, tubers, whole grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds, and so on and so forth. There are a lot of potential benefits of a plant-based diet in kidney disease. Uh, plant-based diets have the potential to prevent uh, and treat some of the causes of kidney disease, including diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity. They can also help with the complications of kidney disease, which we'll talk about in this lecture, and also help prevent uh, uh, the progression or at least slow the progression of kidney disease for those who already have it, which we'll also talk about in this lecture as well. And this comes from a recent paper that we published last year for anyone interested. So let's first talk about the causes of kidney disease. 
The, the causes of kidney disease are broken down in this pie chart here. And what you can see is that the major cause of kidney disease in blue is diabetes. Diabetes accounts for nearly half of all causes of kidney disease. And uh, high blood pressure comes in second place, accounting for a little bit more than uh, a quarter of cases. And then the last quarter of cases is made up by a medley of various causes uh, that unfortunately occur, but are not necessarily related to diet or lifestyle. So the focus of today's talk is actually on the other three quarters, the diabetes and hypertension, and how that relates to kidney disease and what can be done about it. So how can plant-based diets help with preventing and treating diabetes and obesity? I have only one slide on this because the rest of the talk is on kidney disease and uh, there are other uh, speakers and uh, presentations on this topic, but to briefly summarize, Plant-based diets have a lot of fiber that can help with reducing uh, weight gain. They also are low in caloric density. They help reduce caloric intake. They reduce fat intake. And they also reduce processed food and sugar intake uh, when plant-based diets are consumed uh, in a healthy fashion. And similarly, plant-based diets can help with weight loss, improve insulin sensitivity. They can help reduce the glycemic index of foods. Uh, and they all can also improve insulin secretion. So all these things can help uh, with these two diseases that contribute to uh, kidney disease. The other major cause of kidney disease is high blood pressure, as I mentioned earlier. It is a cause, it's the second most common cause of kidney disease and kidney failure, but it's also a complication. And because it is a cause and complication, I wanted to spend a few slides talking about it. As kidney function declines, sodium excretion becomes impaired, and this causes the body to retain salt and water, which then leads to high blood pressure, and this causes activation of several hormones that uh, raise blood pressure. So a little background on high blood pressure. Uh, unfortunately, high blood pressure is common in this society. Uh, 102 million Americans have high blood pressure. And if that's not uh, sad enough, if you don't have high blood pressure at the age of 45, your 40 year risk of developing high blood pressure is still about 90%, depending on ethnicity and gender, um, it's still very high, which is unfortunate. And this leads some to believe that high blood pressure is destiny or it's natural with aging, but that's not actually true. I give this lecture to our medical students and in that I describe that in indigenous societies, high blood pressure does not naturally occur. And actually, as we get older, blood pressure stays the same or may even decrease. And uh, ultimately researchers uh, came up with an idea that perhaps we can modify uh, the rise in blood pressure by the foods that we eat. And this ultimately led to the creation of the DASH diet. And in an obscure paper, uh, the creators of the DASH diet actually wrote their rationale for it. And they write that the diet was designed to have the blood pressure lowering effects of a vegetarian diet, yet contain enough animal products to make them palatable to non-vegetarians. And ultimately the DASH diet uh, was studied and it was studied in a series of studies. And the DASH diet was a randomized controlled trial of about 459 adults. They were randomized to three diets a controlled diet, a DASH diet, and a diet that was kind of in between a controlled diet and a DASH diet. And they studied these folks for about eight weeks and they kept body weight and sodium intake the same. And most notably, they gave the, uh, the participants the food so they knew exactly what the participants were eating. And what they noticed was that those eating a DASH diet actually had the biggest decrease in blood pressure. And pretty quickly, within about two weeks, uh, folks had a decrease in blood pressure that decrease in blood pressure was maintained over a subsequent six weeks. The controlled diet led to a slight decrease in blood pressure, likely because the controlled diet probably was still healthier than what the participants were eating to begin with. And then finally, the in-between diet known as a fruit and vegetable diet, which is a little misleading, uh, produced a result that was in between the controlled diet and the DASH diet. But uh, the main takeaway is that a DASH diet, uh, which included plant foods, could reduce 
uh, blood pressure pretty quickly and keep blood pressure uh, at a lower level. Ultimately, the diet was repeated with a sodium restriction arm uh, to see if blood pressure would be reduced further, and indeed it was. And ultimately, that information was analyzed to see who was reduced, who had the biggest reductions in their blood pressure. The maximum reduction in blood pressure with diet was 21 points systolic and eight points diastolic. And this is like going from a blood pressure of 150 over 90 to 129 over 82. So this is a really big reduction in blood pressure. And this reduction was seen in the folks who had the highest blood pressure to begin with in the study, those who had a blood pressure of 150 over 90 or higher. Ultimately, in this secondary analysis, the researchers uh, went on to write that this is actually a bigger reduction than many blood pressure medications that are out on the market. And they, they, they provided this graph, and you can see that, uh, that they compare the DASH diet, which is this one here, uh, compared to other types of medication. So the FDA requirement for a new blood pressure medication is relatively small. And then they provide examples of blood pressure reduction of various medications that are commonly used already um, by providers, including myself. And you can see that for ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, uh, blood pressure reduction is, uh, is substantial, but it's not as much as the DASH diet or certainly with the DASH diet combined. And then also sodium reduction by itself does provide a significant amount of blood pressure reduction as well. And the, the main takeaway is that the most blood pressure reduction you can get is when you combine a DASH diet with a low sodium diet, you get the biggest bang for your buck. My question is with this is that can you improve blood pressure even more by eating an exclusively plant-based diet? And we think that it is possible, although that has yet to be proven. But a few years ago, um, my colleagues and I wrote a paper on this. And we basically summarize all the evidence showing that plant-based diets do indeed reduce blood pressure and the reasons for it. So there are a few reasons why animal protein is associated with an increased blood pressure. This is due to the sodium content, which is relatively high. The potassium content tends to be on the lower side. Animal protein tends to be associated with weight gain. And as you gain weight, blood pressure does rise through a variety of mechanisms. Animal protein in itself tends to have amino acid types that tend to raise blood pressure for reasons that we don't fully understand. And there tends to be increased oxidative stress and inflammation with animal protein that contributes to a higher blood pressure. Plant protein, on the other hand, has been associated and studied uh, to lower blood pressure. And the reasons are basically the opposite of what I stated with animal protein. These foods tend to be lower in sodium. They tend to be higher in potassium, which is very important in helping uh, reduce blood pressure. These foods tend to be associated with weight loss. For every, every kilogram of weight loss, there tends to be a one point reduction in the systolic. Uh, these foods tend to have favorable amino acid types that help with reducing blood pressure. There tends to be less inflammation and oxidative stress. And there also tends to be a natural alkali, which is thought to help with uh, lowering blood pressure. So for all these reasons, uh, plant-based diets are helpful in reducing blood pressure, which is both a cause and complication of kidney disease. Mm -hmm.